Number 10. The Venus Wave Spotted by the Akatsuki spacecraft in 2015, a massive wave was observed traveling across the surface of Venus. Stretching for 10,000 kilometers, the wave continued up until Venus's cloud tops, where it suddenly became stationary. It is uh, good to note that the average traveling speed of clouds in Venus upper atmosphere roughly caps out at about 100 meters per second. The source of the wave is is undetermined, with theories being tossed around that it might have been caused by a rogue gravity wave, which itself would have been caused by the displacement of a fluid from its preferred position. Uh, as Venus is an extremely volatile planet, and no research craft has survived for longer than a couple of minutes on its surface, these claims are difficult to prove, and the secrets of this blue dot remain hidden beneath its swirling clouds. Number 9. Oumuamua On October 19th, 2017, an object was sighted from the University of Hawaii. Classified as a comet, the object is thin and flat, or roughly a quarter of a mile long. But more importantly, it was picking up speed. If you don't remember middle school science, an object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an object of similar or equal mass. In space, because there is nothing to act upon the object to slow it down, any velocity will be kept until impact. But an increase in velocity doesn't make sense without propellant. So what was moving Oumuamua? Well, well, the theory goes that it might contain a chunk of solid hydrogen, which was slowly falling off of the object's surface and allowing for an increase in speed. However, studying the comet is completely impossible, as it's the first observed object to fly into our system and then fly back out. So this theory is just kind of unconfirmed, and we may never know where the Traveler came from, nor where it did go. Number 8. PSO J3 18. 0.5-22. Discovered yet again by our friends at the University of Hawaii, PSO J318.5-22 is a rogue planet, floating through space without a star for it to orbit. It's estimated to be roughly the size of Jupiter, but as to where it came from, no one has a clue. Theories about some hoping that it may have been kicked away from its home star due to a gravitational anomaly, but who can say? None but the rogue planet, no. Number 7. The Diamond Planet Discovered in 2004, Janssen is an exoplanet close to the star Cancri A. Years later, the planet was determined to be a carbon planet, a theoretical type of planet with more carbon than oxygen. As a result of this, it is theorized, due to the method of which diamonds are created, that within Janssen could lie an absolute abundance of diamonds. However, getting to it would be difficult. See, Janssen's proximity to the sun is so small that average temperatures are estimated to be around uh, 17,000 degrees Celsius. So good luck getting close enough to snag some stones. Honestly, the scariest thing to me is that someone might actually try this, for reasons that I doubt even the greatest minds could truly comprehend, beyond, I guess, Greed. Number 6. The Vampire Star Halloween's over, but the true horror fans know that it lasts all year long. Not just limited to our solar system, the existence of Hammer Horror classic monsters has clearly reached the stars, specifically symbiotic stars. See, when two stars are formed in proximity to one another, their mass will draw in the hydrogen from the other star, which will deplete its life, turning it into a white dwarf. From there, the white dwarf will go supernova, annihilating both in the process. What scientists have difficulty explaining is how such celestial entities exist, and worst of all, how some have survived the supernova. It's hypothesized that Betelgeuse, the star, not the ghost, is what's called a cannibal star. And before we observed it, Betelgeuse must have sucked the life out of another star. So why can we still see Betelgeuse today, despite the fact that the other star would have gone Novo? Wait, did I say it three times? Number 5. The Huge LQG Quasars are extremely supermassive black holes that are surrounded by accretion disks, which then release their generation of a beam as pure radiation. We'll get into that later. Cool! 
and slightly terrifying, right? Well, the huge LQG is made up of a cluster of 74 quasars. 74. Originally believed to be impossible, this massive cluster of black holes and radiation defies both science and sense just by its existence. The huge LQG has a rough span of 4 billion light years, easily the largest structure in the universe, and by far larger than our own. Number 4. The Boots Void Do you know what's more terrifying than something? Nothing. And the Boots Void is just that. Nothing. A region of space where there is simply nothing. And to be clear, this isn't Barnard 68, the dark nebula that eats light. No, no, no. This is just nothing. Several galaxies do surround it, but none exist within its center. There's nothing within the void. There may never have been, and there maybe never will be. Or maybe there's just something keeping everything else out. Number 3. The Incoming Mega Comet Did you know that every year 17,000 meteorites fall to Earth? Now, most of these just burn up in the atmosphere, usually long before they're visible. Uh, the ones that can be seen are the ones that are actually dubbed meteors. But what if a meteor couldn't burn up in the atmosphere? Spotted by the Hubble telescope, the comet Bernardinelli Bernstein is currently flying right towards us at around 72,000 miles per hour. 60 miles across, the meteor is roughly half the theorized size of the asteroid response responsible for ending the age of the dinosaurs. But nevertheless, this cosmic catastrophe could cause considerable consternation were it to collide with our rock. So, when does it get here? Well, don't bother looking up because it, it isn't going to come within like a billion miles of us. Even so, if it changes course even slightly, we could be looking at a pretty dark future. Number 2. Gamma Ray Bursts There's a distinct beauty to black holes, their swirling light collapsing into a mass so dense as to erase light itself. Their byproducts are gamma ray bursts, these streams of light that fire out of what would be visualized as the top and bottom of the black hole. It sort of looks like a gyroscope, only one that, you know, defies physics and erases matter. Well, as it turns out, even the most beautiful parts of this flower can be its deadliest, as gamma ray bursts are explosions of high intensity radiation that could cook anything in its way in a matter of seconds. So it's a good thing that, you know, stars aren't dying out regularly, and even better that our planet has never been hit by a gamma ray burst before, oh wait, it actually totally was. Well, the effects wouldn't exactly be, you know, death star adjacent, if Close enough, the radiation would absolutely be lethal, and close in terms of spatial proximity could be anywhere, honestly. Comforting thought. Number 1. The CMB Cold Spot The CMB Cold Spot was discovered by the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, a device primarily constructed to measure cosmic background radiation and test the theory of the Big Bang. The Cold Spot was added to a structure that is titled, I'm not joking, the Axis of Evil, a name given to any anomaly that deviates from the Copernican principle. Far larger than the boot's void, temperatures within the cold spot are around 0.00007 Kelvin. The average in space, of course, is about 2.7 Kelvin. What caused the creation of the cold spot is unknown, but physicist Laura Mersini Houghton claimed that it could be an imprint from a parallel universe. Number 10. Lost Habitable World Remember in 2020 when we casually discovered phosphine on Venus? And we talked about it for like four business days and then went back to normal? Yeah, in the middle of 2020 of all times, data from 40 years ago resurfaced. Documents from an old NASA mission where they may have overlooked this phosphine. Yeah, whoops, didn't see that quick sign of life there. Yeah, our bad, oops. This compound of phosphorus and hydrogen, this is eye-opening, but What's next at this point? Well, NASA is currently preparing to launch two new missions to Venus. This is part of NASA's discovery program they're launching in 2030. So, something to look forward to, dare I say. The Da Vinci Plus and the Verita S. The first is a deep atmosphere Venus investigation of noble gases, chemistry and imaging, hence da Vinci. Vinci. Then the second will map Venus's surface, studying its geologic history and hopefully we'll get an understanding to what happened to such a lost habitable world, as NASA puts it. I don't want to find bones of like humans and stuff, that's scary. Number 9. Carbon on Mars It's one thing to have Elon tweeting about going to Mars, but when NASA talks about it, I get an eerie feeling, you know? NASA's old school. They're like, oh, we may have found carbon 40 years ago. We don't know. Papers everywhere. 
It's so NASA to have papers all over the place. So old school. Well, in 2022, just back in January, believe it or not, NASA's Curiosity rover measured carbon signatures on Mars. This is exciting. Paul Mahaffey, principal investigator of the sample analysis at Mars, he says, quote, we're finding things on Mars that are tantalizingly interesting. Tantalizingly, good word. But we would really need more evidence to say we've identified life. End quote. Okay, so we're close. It seems like we're close. You're saying we're close, right? Side note, imagine going on a Willy Wonka trip to Mars with Elon. Like, who's actually gonna go on this thing? I would pay not to go. How does that sound? No way. I can't do wooden roller coasters, let alone a rocket ship. Number eight, Europa Cryobot. We talk about Jupiter's moon Europa quite often and there's reason. We found traces of water on the icy shell of the moon, which is fascinating in general because, well, water and space, we love that. All signs point to aliens, if that's the case. But the part that really has NASA's attention is the tectonic activity beneath the icy shell, meaning that somewhere in the middle there could be warm water flowing. Yeah, imagine finding a solar space spa. That'd be nice and relaxing. One of the only ways to get a look under that shell of ice and find out is by using Valkyrie. Yeah, Valkyrie's great. She's a chirobot that NASA created specifically for this mission. This machine is capable of melting through layers and layers of ice. A prototype was actually tested in Alaska and the results were promising. This chirobot is capable of crawling through eight kilometers of ice a year. Awesome, that's great. Can't wait to meet Atlanteans in 2040. Let's do it, plenty to look forward to. I'll practice my alien handshake now. Or do we do like a hug thing? You never know. Even in space, you never know. Number seven, Abel and Baker. We often remember Laika, the space dog, and her, you know, 103 minute cosmic journey aboard Sputnik 2. God rest your soul. But does anybody remember Abel and Baker? Why don't we talk about them? What's going on? This was the American version of Laika. This was less than two years later. This was May 28th, 1959. The United States launched a female rhesus monkey named Abel and a female squirrel monkey named Baker. Just launched them into space. This mission lasted 15 minutes and they both safely returned back home, which is great news. The monkeys were not injured from the trip at all, or so they say, although they were whipping through space at 10,000 miles an hour. It's pretty impressive. Reminder, this was 1959. This was when space travel became the real deal. This is now a possibility. Abel sadly passed away after the flight. Meanwhile, Baker got famous. Yeah, she was getting letters, 150 letters a day, supposedly. I'm talking fan mail to a monkey. That's great, right? These ladies are icons. Never mind Laika. Hit that thumbs up for Baker, you know? She made this list possible. Number six, asteroid redirection. Okay, this has Michael Bay written all over it. I'm pretty excited for this project, I'm not gonna lie. I can't even catch a baseball with my bare hands. How the hell is NASA gonna catch an asteroid hurling through space? Let's break this science down. NASA landing on an asteroid is one thing, but their asteroid redirection mission is just next level, honestly. The plan is for NASA to catch, to catch an asteroid using hypothetically a large space inflatable. And no, I'm not joking, just a big floaty in space. They're gonna go and just catch it. Yeah, and then they're gonna move said asteroid to the moon where it would then orbit for further studies. Yeah, we want to adopt a rock and then gently have astronauts land on it and then study the moon. Is this 2099? Is this possible? How are we here? This is crazy. We can't figure out women's rights, but we can catch an asteroid in space. Number five, NASA's gateway. Sounds interesting already, doesn't it? No, it's not teleportation, don't get too excited. NASA's gateway is the next big space station that's gonna be flying around our heads every day. And they're partnering up with other international agencies, so it's quite a big deal. The US Habitat, that's the final piece to this floating science center. The US Habitat is set to be delivered sometime in 2025, allowing four astronauts to begin studying on board the station. Science that could get us even closer to Mars, which is, Scary, I think it's fascinating, but I think it's pretty scary. Why, where are we going? Why are we leaving? What's up? Say everyone's leaving? Like, what's going on? Like, this is NASA going to Mars, and then this is Elon going to Mars. Number four, psych. If you play No Man's Sky, this next one will have you itching, my friends. Here we go. My gamer friends, this is for you. NASA has a billion dollar mission that was supposed to launch this year, but it faced delays in completing software verification testing for the craft's navigation. So ironically, Psyche had us all psyched out. It didn't happen. It will now launch in 2023 or 2024, one of the two, depending on the next best launch period. You know, space, they're like, uh, now, wait. Now I've gotta wait. 
It's so, it's, it's really hard to time stuff out in space. But once they arrive, hypothetically, this asteroid is believed to be a massive nickel core of a protoplanet, just a big chunk of nickel floating through space, one of the biggest asteroids in our belt. So whenever NASA does arrive, after a four year commute, of course, it sounds like it's gonna be worth the wait. I'll get up there, I'll start shoveling some nickel. Some hot space nickel, there we go. Number three, Titan Dragonfly. This mission is set to launch in 2026. This one could change things, for real. Saturn has a plethora of moons, just like Jupiter, and like the latter, these moons are capable of holding the secrets to life. Possibly. Once the rotor craft arrives on Titan, much later in 2034, it will then fly around and study the moon's environment. Yeah, how amazing is that? This is so Dune. This mission is set to last almost three years, so whatever it does find could potentially crack the code to how life on Earth here evolved in the first place. This beast of a rotor craft is expected to travel to dozens of locations and search for prebiotic chemical processes. Aliens. It's a nice way of saying they're looking for aliens. More of, oh, what's up? More of these guys. Number two, the fallen astronaut. This isn't a space mission per se, but it is something that happened in space and not a lot of people know about it. And it's certainly not something I knew about before this, so let's talk. The Fallen Astronaut is an aluminum sculpture that was meant to depict an astronaut in a spacesuit. The piece was commissioned and placed on the actual moon by the crew of Apollo 15. This was back on August 1st, 1971. It is next to a plaque that lists the name, the 14 names of the men who died, and the entire thing is meant to be a tribute and to commemorate the astronauts and cosmonauts who died in the advancement of space exploration. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful tribute. This wasn't cleared prior to being done, but you know, I think the important thing is that it was done. I don't think anyone's getting in trouble for having this secret, lovely, personal mission on the moon, you know? No one's getting slapped on the wrist for this one. Those explorers were brave and brilliant, and they of course deserve to be commemorated in the best way, on the moon itself. Couldn't imagine a more peaceful place. And finally, number one, Artemis One. Artemis One is a planned, uncrewed test flight that's part of NASA's Artemis program. The Artemis program is a United States-led international human space flight program. Basically, the goal is to put humans back on the moon, because yeah, that was kind of fun, right, when we were doing that? More specifically on the South Pole area of the moon. The aim is to have humans there by 2025, and if this is successful, it would be the first crewed lunar landing since Apollo 17 back in 1972. So yeah, it's about time we head back, I think. Artemis 1 was expected to launch in February 2022, but now it's launching in August 2022 instead. This mission will be the first flight of the Orion MPCV, and it will be the certification for the Orion spacecraft, as well as the Space Launch System launch vehicle to see if they're ready for crewed flights. Basically, it's important. It's a big, it's a big test that they can't screw up. Let's fingers crossed. If all goes well, crewed flights will begin with the second flight test, Artemis 2, of course, with humans. That's pretty exciting. I want to end on a hopeful note, you know? I went from like Leica and launching monkeys out into space. I'm like, hey, you know what? We're going back to the moon. Isn't that fun? Kicking off the list at number 10, black hole secrets. This one I'm extremely excited for, and you should be as well. Only a couple of weeks ago, NASA launched a mission to measure X-rays released by black holes and neuron stars. Sounds pretty scientific and nerdy. X-rays are extremely powerful, but we can only do so much with Earth's atmosphere standing in the way. That's where science comes in. We'll just blast an X-ray out of there. Boom, problem solved. 190 million, debit, bop. It'll go on a two-year mission, seeing the universe in ways that we never have before. We'll finally see what's going on with these high energy events, like stars exploding or the birth of black holes, rapid rotations, extreme temperatures. Everything in these X-rays will tip us off to their origin, which is vital when it comes to something like a black hole, something we already know nothing about. Polarized light only vibrates in one direction, whereas light, our light, vibrates in any direction. We're narrowing this cosmic puzzle down one piece at a time, and it's pretty exciting. But like I said, definitely terrifying. Number nine, Voyager 1. We've looked at Saturn in awe more so than the other planets because of its rings. Maybe it's the 2008 Beyonce classic single ladies, but we love rings, still to this day. Since 1610, we've known about Saturn's, and it stood out ever since Galileo brought this headline to town. Its many moons get hit by many meteors, and the dust and ice that follows orbits the giant. But it wasn't until 1979 until we discovered that Jupiter also has rings. Small, but mighty. That discovery came after the Voyager 1 passed Jupiter, but it also discovered two new Jovian moons. So far, this flyby is treating us quite well, but it only gets better, only gets better. Once Voyager 1 got to Saturn, it found five new moons and an entirely new ring called the G-Ring. As of 2012, Voyager 1 has been interstellar space, so only time will tell what's really out there. I'm terrified. Are we in a simulation? Probably. Number eight, 
the new telescope. Since we launched the Hubble telescope back in April 1990, it's been a key asset in these groundbreaking discoveries. We've been able to predict the age of the universe, roughly, and we found moons around Pluto. Since the mission began back in 1990, Hubble has made over 1 million observations. It can literally see our past as it shows us things 13 billion light years away. That's why this new telescope launching later this month can literally rewrite history. This is the most expensive space instrument to ever be flown or launched away from us. It's 100 times more powerful than Hubble, which is insane after you really think about what we've done with it. The James Webb Telescope will let us see back to the creation of the universe. So keep your notifications on for a bit, because we might be in a simulation after all. We actually don't know. What do you think's out there? Just more space, more planets? Are we inside of a body like Osmosis Jones? I have no idea. I literally don't know. Number seven, the ISS. Ah yes, that time humans launched a science center into space. We love it. We still see it, I see it once a night, it's beautiful. Are astronauts still there? Do we use it? Yes and yes. We actually just grew peppers up there for the first time ever, there's lots happening. Back in 1998, the United States and Russia launched the first two pieces to the International Space Station, the ISS. Pieces were added over time more and more until come November 2000, it was now complete. In 2018, legislation was also approved to extend operations until 2030. So every time you see a bright ball of light slowly pass over your head, it might be a bunch of scientists eating space tacos. Literally, it's probably that. Number six, Explorer One. Long before NASA was even NASA, in fact, back in the Jet Propulsion Laboratory days, tests were underway to follow the recent Sputnik satellite into the cosmos. Where are the Russians going? I don't know, but we're gonna follow them. Cut to a few months later, Explorer 1 was ready for its first day at space school. NASA's first mission was to study the cosmic rays in Earth's orbit. Pretty low key compared to what we're doing now. I mean, Elon Musk just launched a car out there because he's like, eh, I'm bored. The cosmic ray activity was actually so much lower than anticipated. So much so that scientists actually sent out another satellite two months later. Physicist James Van Allen believed that there was something interfering with the satellite cosmic ray detector. So once the second satellite was in the picture, Literally, that theory was backed up. And this introduced us to the Van Allen radiation belts. Imagine getting radiation belts named after you, that'd be awesome. Just Taylor radiation, that's nah, not as cool. Number five, the space shuttle. Kinda hard to walk on the moon without getting a ride there first, am I right? In 1972, the Apollo program started to slow down and the bills were starting to come in. These Apollo rockets were of course single use, but they were expensive, we're literally just throwing money into the universe. New reusable spacecraft was underway. Richard Nixon announced this new spacecraft, just literally two rocket boosters attached to an orbiter module with an external fuel tank, and it took them nine years to figure it out, and come 1981, the shuttle Columbia lifted off. Our first reusable space shuttle, that was soon followed by four others, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. Many of these combined 135 missions included a pit stop or two at the International Space Station. It all comes together. Number four, Apollo 13. April 11th, 1970, Apollo 13 was heading for the moon. On board the ship was astronauts James Lovell, John Swigert, and Fred Hayes. 46 hours after takeoff, there was an explosion that damaged the shuttle drastically. Every system to keep the astronauts alive and well were no longer operational. The second oxygen tank thermostat had been damaged long before the launch, and since its blast off, these astronauts had little to no chance of coming home. There's actually a movie about this entire thing, and it's a wild ride, you have to watch it. A Tom Hanks classic. Their power supply, their water, their oxygen, heat, light, everything was just cut off. They had lost over 30 pounds combined as a unit when they got back. It was horrible. The people at NASA's Mission Control Center, they had to do months worth of calculations in only a few days. Instead of going to the moon, they had to figure out a way to use its pole and then just return these guys as quickly and as safely as possible back to Earth. Number three. Preservance. Only 140 million miles away, Mars is pretty similar to Earth. Only its days last 37 minutes longer, and they're definitely a little colder than ours here. Maybe not in Canada, I don't know, it's a cold one today. It's home to not one, but two moons, and its atmosphere is primarily CO2, with some nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, and oxygen. 2020 will go down, of course, as one of the worst years in all of our lives, but off-planet, over on Mars, it was a little more hopeful. The Mars 2020 mission was launched on July 30th, and finally, this past February, it landed. The team sent this rover up, Perseverance, which was a cosmic Trojan horse, essentially. It was loaded. This thing had an ultralight spectrometer, panoramic cameras, subsurface radars, weather station, and perhaps the most interesting, it had a helicopter, a little drone. Lovely. Like a little Decepticon. Just released a... Then it flew away. Ingenuity hitched a ride, and come April 19th, 2021, we have our first flight on Mars. Look at it go. So small. A little bit different than when the Wright brothers had to, you know, run their way into the skies. Now we're, now we're here. Number two. 
dead galaxies. The universe is about 13 billion years old, and new research from NASA using the Hubble Space Telescope along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in northern Chile, they both combined their powers and they found six different dead galaxies. Yeah, galaxies that had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make these stars, and without the fuel for stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing. Which is interesting if you're a scientist, and also if you're not one, because already you're like, what? These things can die? This discovery led us to a new question that we didn't even know we had. What led these galaxies to die? What happened to all the cold gas in them so early on? These six galaxies lived fast, hot lives, but we aren't really sure what went wrong. Lead author and assistant professor at Astronomy of University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, she proposed several potential explanations and gives us insight into the future of the studies when she says, did a massive super black hole in the galaxy center turn on and heat up all the gas? If so, the gas could still be there, but now it's hot. Or could it have been expelled and now it's being prevented from going back onto the galaxy? Or did the galaxy just use up all this power and now the supply is just cut off? These are some of the crazy questions that people are asking. Meanwhile, I'm like, where's my phone charger? I haven't seen it in 30 minutes. And finally, number one, solar flares. We literally revolve around our sun and its heat. It blesses us with life energy, solar rotation, and most importantly, some sweet tan lines. But sometimes she acts up and gets a little scary, to say the least. Sometimes the sun creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our entire planet. Yeah, I can't even think of that right now. I can't even fathom. This creates a stream of radiation. It creates solar wind. Now, normally, this is a beautiful event. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this radiation. But too much of a good thing can be just disaster. Back in October, a large solar flare was spotted, and then three days later, it finally hit Earth. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is still pretty strong. The biggest solar event was back in 1859. It's called the Carrington event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking some telegraph operators. Imagine that, imagine calling your friend and the power goes out and you get zapped through your phone. We were looking at power outages on a massive scale. If this happened now, people would lose their shit. Right in the middle of Spider-Man No Way Home, bam, blackout. Life as we know it is now meaningless. Is the Green Goblin back? I don't know, we couldn't tell you. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Almaz. Almaz was a super secret Soviet military space station program that began in the early 1960s. Basically, there were three separate stations that were launched between 1973 and 1976, and they were crewed military recon stations. How they kept the whole thing more under wraps is that they designed them like civilian space stations. One of the stations failed shortly after achieving orbit, but the last two both were successful in their crew testing. Although there was success on these flights, the cost associated with them and the benefits benefits of the program weren't matching up, so in the end it didn't go further than there, although the technology used in this program has of course gone on to inform others. In our number 9 spot today we have Long March 2F. Last year in 2020, China claimed to have successfully launched and tested a quote, reusable spacecraft, which is said to be a space plane that could be the key to frequent and low cost access to space, which is a crazy thing to say. While this is very exciting and could potentially help space exploration in very valuable ways, it is said that this particular mission still has quite a bit of mystery surrounding it. It is said that while the launch was viewed by people, the exact nature of the craft itself as well as what it did in space isn't quite clear. An unnamed military source that was quoted by the South China Post apparently said that there were many firsts during this launch, which is why everything is so secretive and secure. At the end of the day, all we can do is sit back, watch, and see what happens. Who knew there was so much drama in the space world? Well, I kind of I guess everyone did. I mean, take a look at the space race. In our number eight spot today, we have Corona. Speaking of the space race, if you're unfamiliar, it was the 20th century competition between the Soviet Union and the United States, and it certainly was something that the world had never seen before. Basically, it was each country trying to one up each other on space flight technology and capabilities, and while this competition had its origins in the missile based nuclear arms race, it also managed to create a lot of technological advancements in the world of space exploration. Doing recon was truly one of the first priorities of both of these countries when it came to actually going to space, and that is why from 1960 to 1972, a recon project with the now terrible nickname Corona was put into effect. Basically, this project was a series of strategic recon satellites that were produced and operated by the CIA Directorate of Science and Technology with additional help from the US Air Force. So basically, the most incredible minds and those with the highest security clearances 
were in on this top secret mission. These satellites were then used to provide photographic surveillance of both the Soviet Union and China. Basically at the time everyone was really worried about nuclear power and this gave them the opportunity to peek behind the curtain and see what was really going on. In our number 7 spot today we have Spaceship One. On July 26, 2007 there was an explosion that occurred at a rocket propulsion test site at the Mohave Air and Spaceport in California. This explosion caused the death of 3 people and 3 others had to be hospitalized for serious injuries. While there were details released about this event, the exact specifics of how this happened were kept shrouded in mystery for quite some time. Basically the explosion occurred just 3 seconds after the start of a cold flow test of nitrous oxide or laughing gas. The test was because during the planned suborbital space trips, the nitrous oxide would then be used as an oxidizer to ignite a fuel of solid rubber and the test was to check that the fuel system plumbing works and it wasn't meant to ignite anything. There were about 7 people there for the test but most of them were behind a barrier that is used when testing things like rockets. Because of the nature of the test there would seemingly be no reason for it to explode but it obviously still did and the reason as to how and why was kept a secret from the public. In our number 6 spot today we have Shijiang 21. Not too long ago China launched a satellite called Shijiang 21 designed to test new ways to clean up space debris which is super cool and actually really important. This is all fine and well but here's where the mysterious part comes in. Basically something else has joined in orbit with the satellite and the US space force detected and catalogued it and while they thought they knew what it was, it turns out that they don't because it's not acting as expected. They thought it was a type of rocket body but now they are just left with more questions than answers. Now there are doubts about whether it even is this rocket body or if it is an entirely different object and regardless, what is the plan with it? This is all a precarious situation as many world powers are testing out certain anti-satellite technologies which of course would be problematic for all the other countries. There is a good chance that we will likely never know the entire truth about the purpose of what the object trailing Xianjiang 21 is but it's for sure keeping the air force on the lookout. Out, and the rest of us can just sit and speculate and hope it's nothing bad for us. In our number 5 spot today we have the fallen astronaut. This isn't exactly a space mission but it is something that happened in space and not a lot of people know about it and it certainly was not something NASA knew about before it took place. The fallen astronaut is an aluminum sculpture that was meant to depict an astronaut in a spacesuit. The piece was commissioned and placed on the moon by the crew of the Apollo 15 on August 1st 1971. It is next to a plaque that lists the 14 names of the men who died and the entire thing is meant to be a tribute and to commemorate the astronauts and cosmonauts who have died in the advancement of space exploration. This wasn't cleared prior to being done but I think the important thing is that it was done. The sacrifice of those people cannot be overstated and it was for the benefit of us all. Those people were brave and brilliant and they deserve to be commemorated in the best way possible. On the moon itself. In our number 4 spot today we have X-37B. In 2009 at NASA's Kennedy Space Center they received a mysterious visitor at the Air Force's super secret X-37B space plane returned from orbit. This space plane went on a record breaking mission as the unmanned spacecraft was in orbit for the last 780 days before autonomously returning to Earth. While we obviously know about the return of this craft, we will likely never know about exactly what went on. The most information we have is that the Air Force research laboratory used this space plane as an orbital platform to conduct highly classified experiments. That is both super cool and super terrifying. Apparently the space plane deployed a few small satellites and the experiments were meant to test different technologies from avionics to advanced propulsion systems. The return of this space plane actually marked the fifth successful mission for the plane which is super impressive. While being very secretive this plane captured the attention of many amateur spy satellite hunters but it proved to be difficult to keep tabs on because the space plane had the ability to alter its orbit in space. That means it requires a lot of vigilance to keep track of, exactly like a super secret plane should. In our number 3 spot today we have Artemis 1. This one is less of a top secret mission and more so on the side of being one you maybe haven't heard of because it hasn't quite happened yet. Artemis 1 is a planned uncrewed test flight that's a part of NASA's Artemis program. The Artemis program is a United States led international human space flight program. Basically the goal is to return human 
humans to the moon, most specifically the south pole area of the moon. The aim is to have humans there by 2025 and if successful, this would be the first crewed lunar landing mission since Apollo 17 that took place in 1972. That's wild. There's people in space right now and we haven't taken a trip back to the moon since 1972. I'm just glad we're working on heading there. Artemis 1 is expected to launch no earlier than February of 22, but it is likely to get pushed back until the summer. And while we wait with bated breath, making sure everything is fully prepared for the mission is more important than rushing. This mission will be the first flight of the Orion MPCV, and it will be the certification for the Orion spacecraft as well as the Space Launch System launch vehicle to see if they are ready for crewed flights. If all goes well, crewed flights will begin with the second flight test, Artemis 2. In our number two spot today, we have an entanglement. Not too long ago, actually just over a week ago as of filming this video, Russia successfully launched a classified military satellite that is said to be a part of Moscow's early warning anti-missile system. Just shortly after this, like we're talking just hours after this, China also had a space launch. They launched their Xi'an 11 satellite into space, which is thought to be in a testing or trial phase right now, with its eventual mission being kept a secret. While all of this is of course fine and well, the one concerning thing is that people are starting to speculate that perhaps these missions might be linked, and that there is a possibility that Russia and China are working together out in space. Who knows really, and there's a high chance that this is just a space coincidence, and I'm not trying to start a space gossip column. Either way, whatever this test satellite is that China launched, we don't know what it will one day be used for, but we can all wait together because whatever it is, it's likely to be probably exciting. In our number one spot today, we have the Manned Orbiting Laboratory. Okay, so you remember the Soviet Union secret Almaz mission we talked about at the beginning of this video in number 10? Well, here's another mission that was like in response to that. Basically, this program called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory was run by the Air Force and the intelligence community. National Reconnaissance Office, and the goal of it was to spy on and throw the Soviet Union off track. Some of the documents in this mission have now been declassified, and according to them, one of the goals was to knock some of Moscow's satellites out of orbit or to fire projectiles at them. They even wanted to try and capture one of the Soviet satellites in space and then basically send it back down to Earth so that they could study it. That's wild! And here's the thing that I couldn't tell you before about the Almaz that I can tell you now. Moscow Moscow equipped their secret space station with a rapid fire cannon in order to stop any of this from happening. I seriously feel like I'm watching some sort of space action movie. I can't believe these are real things that happened and were created in the 60s and 70s of all the times. Number 10. Neptune's rings. Okay, for the first time in 33 years, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope over at NASA, we got a fresh look at Neptune. Now, this new look reveals stunning details of the ice giant's atmosphere, its moons, and its rings. Yeah, its rings. This blew my mind. I couldn't believe that it was Neptune when I first saw this on Reddit. What a glow up. She looks great, honestly. The last time we got a glimpse of her was the summer of 1989, when NASA's Voyager 2 became the first ever spacecraft to observe the planet. I'm excited for the James Webb Space Telescope, what it brings in the future. I don't know if I'm ready though, but this is exactly what I wanted. Just cool photos of planets, that's it. Also show us a black hole maybe, that wouldn't hurt. Number nine, asteroid redirection. Okay, this next one has Michael Bay written all over it. I'm pretty excited for this project. I can't even catch a baseball with my hands and you're telling me NASA is gonna catch an asteroid. Awesome, let's talk about it. NASA landing on an asteroid, that's one thing, that's a feat in itself, but their asteroid redirection mission is just next level. This Coming Monday, like very soon, NASA will broadcast its first attempt to modify the orbit of an asteroid. And yeah, before you start to panic, there's no way any debris can hit Earth afterwards in case anything goes awry, or awry, as I said for way too long. But if an asteroid was coming for Earth, well, now we have a backup plan to save the planet and the human race. That's always great. The planetary defense team is using a craft called DART double asteroid redirection test, which will ideally target the asteroid Dimorphos, altering its orbit. That's cool, hope it works or else it won't work. Number eight, Pluto space slug. Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of information back on our little ex-planet, Pluto. We remember him, God rest his soul. The icy plane shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs are slowly moving across the surface, right? It reminds me of that episode of SpongeBob where the gang is riding a rock for 
a while. Maybe Patrick and SpongeBob are just delivering a cosmic pizza, who knows. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum, and scientists believe so far it's the planet cooling and heating, and then cooling and heating, therefore leaving lines, looking like something's slugging its way across the planet. It's just heat and cooling, cooling and heating, heating and cooling, space stuff, you know. Number seven, dead galaxies. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. New research from NASA using the Hubble Space Telescope found six different dead galaxies. Dead galaxies, no fun at all. Imagine if the Guardians of the Galaxy went here. No 50s music, just imagine dragons, that's it. Just imagine dragons, U2, and Nickelback. That's all it's playing in this galaxy. Horrible, it's a nightmare. These dead galaxies had run out of cold hydrogen needed to make the stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing. Like when your car battery dies, only, you know, this is a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to a new question that we didn't even know that we had. What led these galaxies to die? How did they get to this point? What happened to all of the cold Old gas so early on. These six galaxies lived fast, hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. And yeah, it'd probably help to know. Give us a few tips, that's for sure. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight asking all the right questions. Like for example, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy's center suddenly turn on and then heat up all the gas? If so, if that was the case, the gas could still be there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos or something to come in to fire it up again. Otherwise, it's gonna stay still and quite dead. Dead galaxies. Imagine if a galaxy came back to life. That's way worse than a zombie. Number six, crescent earth. There's something you don't hear often, and of course you won't see this too often either. A crescent earth. What we're actually seeing here is the earth as it rises and looms over the Apollo 14 lander. That crescent there is earth. We look like that from the moon, which is, it makes complete sense. It's just something I never really thought about until now. You see it and you're like, oh yeah, it would look like that, I guess. It would be the opposite. If you were to camp out on the far side of the moon, because the moon and the earth are, you know, tidally locked, you wouldn't be able to see the earth at all in your lifetime. But on the near side of the moon, you'd see the earth all the time, and through the course of about a month, the earth would also go through phases, just like the moon, but they'd be direct opposite phases. People on earth would be witnessing the moon going through, you know, likewise, and I've confused myself talking about this, but you understand what I'm trying to say. I can't believe I've never seen this photo before. It's truly stunning. Number five, smooth moon. While we're on the topic of moons, let's do it. When we think of moons, we think of our own, right? Just a big ball of cheese in the sky. It's got craters. It's got lots of craters and maybe a big old man's face. That's often, that often pops up. We get it. Well, moons are quite unique. Some look a little different. Some look quite haunting, actually. Some look like chewed gum and some look like spaceships. NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017. It looks almost like two moons crashed into one another. It has a ring-like edge. It's, uh, it looks kind of man-made, dare I say. So a new photo has come back after discovering this moon back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. There's just zero craters. It's a smooth moon, one of the smoothest out there. Smoother than your moon. Number four, Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot, and that's just a you know haunting nightmare in itself. I don't want to think about that too much. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something just as interesting, if not more terrifying, than the big red spot. Jupiter's clouds. Yeah, apparently it's got clouds. It feels like you can almost put your arm out and just touch it. It's like a silky space sky, but that's about 20,000 kilometers away. You can't touch that. There's no way in hell. That's a big ball of hydrogen, and it's quite mysterious below those clouds still. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up that they never thought they could ever go. They found constant storms at both poles, and winds so powerful, and its magnetic fields are actually moved around. Winds so strong that it moves the magnetic. I can't even comprehend that. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space, and we love Jupiter. Number three, Mimas moon. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn has 82 moons. If you were a werewolf and you lived on Saturn, you would be so stressed out all the time, constantly. One of those moons is Mimas, and it's a moon that looks oddly familiar. Yeah, if you're a sci-fi geek, this one's gonna give you some anxiety. Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Are we doomed? We're doomed. Saturn's smallest innermost moon caused quite the stir here on Earth when it was first discovered. About a year ago, researchers discovered that the moon has a bit of a wobble to it, almost like a floating magic eight ball, something that's sloshing around inside, like a water balloon in space, that's kind of gross. Mimas could potentially be housing a liquid ocean inside, and if that's the case, everything we know about water and ocean life in space would need to be rewritten. <laughs> rewritten, I said. We have to rewrite it, please. Everything we know about life in space would have to be rethought and rewritten. 
it would just be a whole plethora. We're like, that would be cool, but please don't be the case or else we have to, we have to do a lot of homework. Number two, space selfie. The word selfie hasn't been around for too long, but people have been taking them for years on our planet and not, apparently. With adjustable views and forward facing cameras, they've definitely become easier to take over the years for sure. I've taken a few this morning and in my lifetime, but that didn't stop Apollo 17's Ron Evans from having his own hand at the selfies. Of course he has to one up us. A guy goes into space and he's like, eh. Beat that, 46 million likes. The photo shows about half of Ron, although it's tough to tell with him, you know, decked out in his space Iron Man suit. And apparently he snapped this photo while he was retrieving exposed film from outside of the spacecraft. This is perhaps the most badass selfie of all time. On the clock too, what a king, getting it done. On the way back to Earth, near the end of the mission, Evans did a one hour and six minute long spacewalk. So it's entirely possible that's when this photo was taken. I mean, technically we were all in the background for this one, so we were there. Well, not us, but your parents. Number one, Mars Eclipse. So this last one here is more of a video rather than a single image because you know what, I was feeling nice. I wanted to bring you a series of 89 different images all captured by NASA's Curiosity rover and then just whip them in your eyes really fast. Make a little movie for you. NASA's Curiosity rover showed us insights as to what life is like on Mars and what it looks like. So on Earth we have these cosmic coincidences, you know, the distant ratio between Earth and the moon versus the Earth and the sun. It's rare, but when the moon passes in front of the sun, we get a total eclipse. It covers it completely. On other planets, however, namely Mars, that's not exactly the case. The angle aren't as perfect. So what happens when one of the moon passes in front of the sun? Well, it's much smaller and it appears like this. Curiosity was able to observe a ton of these instances, which are called transits. They're not eclipses, they're transits from Mars and its two moons. And these are from Mars and its two moons, from Phobos and Deimos. Yeah, imagine having two moons. That would get confusing. Beautiful, but everyone into astrology would be like, I think it's my month. I don't really know. This other moon here is confusing me. Sound off below what the craziest thing is you've ever got a photo of, I don't know, maybe in space, maybe not. Maybe on Earth too, a lot of weird shit happens down here. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have life on Mars. This is a legend that's been around for quite some time, especially since the 1970s when the Viking 1 and 2 were launched. This legend basically suggests that there is, or at least was, alien life on Mars, and that NASA knows about it, but they are just keeping the little secret to themselves. Like all space conspiracies, this legend ranges from some pretty out there, but still based in reality ideas, all the way to to absolutely absurd tinfoil hat vibes. What I mean is that some believe this is true because they claim to see alien fossils in the photos of the surface of Mars that we have. There are others who think that maybe NASA just isn't searching for signs of alien life at all. And then there are those who think that Mars is actually fully inhabited by like half alien, half human creatures and NASA is just hiding that from us. I'll let you decide on this one. In our number nine spot today, we have X-37B. So I guess this one is more like a NASA mystery rather than an urban legend, but basically they sent a space shuttle up, but no one knows exactly what it's for. Throughout the last few years, an X-37B spacecraft has gone on a number of different missions up into the orbit of Earth, but no one is willing to spill the beans on what these missions are aimed at doing. Of course, like with any legend, the theories are abound. Some people believe the purpose of these missions is to test out new technology very reasonable, but there are others out there who think that these missions are meant to destroy different satellites, or that this craft is really some kind of space weapon, but only time will tell if all of the secrets of the craft ever get declassified. In our number 8 spot today we have the live stream. This is an urban legend that stems from an ISS live stream a few years ago. Back in 2016, alien enthusiasts and UFO watchers noticed as they watched a live stream that was being broadcast from the ISS to objects that seemed to be entering Earth's atmosphere. These objects were unidentified and they looked like they were tumbling toward Earth, so many people took this image to be UFOs. To only add more fuel to the fire shortly after these objects could be seen, the live stream was cut off abruptly. NASA swears that this was merely just a coincidence, and while that is possible, not everyone is convinced that's the case. In our number seven spot today, we have changes. Okay, other than those who have been to space, who's to say what experiencing something like that would do to just your entire outlook on life and especially your mental health. I mean, on one hand, it's gotta be one of the most incredible experiences, but on the other side, it would be terrifying and probably kind of lonely. Spending weeks and sometimes even months in the vast darkness of space, as amazing as it sounds, it likely isn't for the faint of heart. That is exactly why this 
NASA legend suggests that many of the astronauts who have been to space have returned with changes in their behavior, and apparently NASA has done everything they can to deny this. It is said that there is a psychologist who has worked with many NASA employees who actually went on to criticize the agency for denying that these behavioral changes existed, and she even suggested that they be looked into and researched more because she believes it goes deeper than any of us may even realize. This would include more in-depth screening both before and after the missions. This legend is likely to have developed in 2007 after former astronaut Lisa Nowak was arrested for harming someone to which she pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. In our number 6 spot today we have the mystery house. You may or may not have heard about the mystery house that was seen on the moon in November of last year. This mysterious object was spotted by the U-22 rover, but at the time this rover was at such a distance it needed time to get there to check it out. Months later when the rover arrived it was released that it was in fact just a weird shaped rock, but not everyone is convinced and legend has it this just may be a cover up for what this mystery house really is. Of course people believe that this mysterious object likely has some sort of alien or extraterrestrial origin despite what researchers are saying. In our number 5 spot today we have space signals. It is no secret that NASA has been tracking and looking into a ton of mysterious radio signals referred to as fast radio bursts that have been detected in space. Some of these signals we have been able to find the source of, but some have been plaguing the minds of scientists everywhere since they were first discovered. Legend has it however that NASA knows exactly where these signals are coming from and of course it's aliens, but they just don't want to tell us. What do you think? Do you think NASA would keep aliens a secret from us or is this just some space conspiracy sort of stuff? Let us know down below in the comments. In our number 4 spot today we have black holes. Of course black holes are one of the most terrifying and mysterious parts of space and while we know they exist, we really don't know much else about them. Of course people and researchers will try to get a closer glimpse at them and maybe even try and take matters into their own hands and attempt to recreate the conditions of a black hole right here on earth. The world's largest particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider or LHC, which has been credited with proving the existence of the Higgs boson particle, is part of the source of another space legend and that has to do with the idea that NASA is creating their own black hole. Some believe this project is intentional while others just worry about it becoming a reality accidentally. It's true that if this were to happen it would be bad news, but luckily this probably isn't very likely and may not even be possible. In our number 3 spot today we have secrets. Of course NASA knows a lot more than the average person would when it comes to the likely fate of our planet. I mean they know a lot more about the planet than the average person and tell me this, when was the last time you even looked through a telescope? It's just safe to say they are better briefed on all of the cosmic horrors that threaten our planet. We are definitely more well versed with the disasters that we may face here on the planet, but when it comes to threats that sit thousands of light years away, well we definitely aren't the experts. That is the basis for this theory or legend that should NASA find out that we are facing some sort of humanity destroying space threat that they wouldn't even tell us. NASA would likely know about a life altering asteroid collision long before it happened but some people think that even if they had the time to warn us, they just wouldn't. And it doesn't even stop at the usual threat like an asteroid. This belief includes things like pieces of space junk, an alien invasion, the sun burning us alive, really as wild as you can get, people think NASA would just keep it all a secret. In our number 2 spot today we have preparations. On July 20th 1969 President Nixon made a call that would rack up some astronomically large long distance charges when he called the Apollo 11 astronauts who were at the time on the moon. He of course wanted to congratulate them on this incredible achievement but as it turns out he maybe wasn't all that confident that the mission was going to be successful. His former speechwriter let it slip that there was in fact an emergency broadcast script that had been written should the mission have gone south. The speech was later leaked and it said, quote, fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. I know everyone's got to have a contingency plan, but if I was one of those astronauts, it would be a little bit chilling to have heard about the words that were prepared in the case that you were just being left out in space forever. In our number one spot today we have Stuck. Recently on a Space Legends myth 
list. We talked about the Fisher space pen and today we are talking about how it relates to another NASA legend. Basically, Nixon almost did have to use that speech he had prepared because following the historic moonwalk, Aldrin and Armstrong discovered that a one inch engine arm circuit breaker switch had broken off the instrument panel. This was an integral part of getting the engine to ignite so that they would be able to make it back home, so rightfully so, they were pretty terrified. The broken switch was reported to Mission Control, but by the next morning they still didn't have a solution. Aldrin explained that quote, After examining it more closely, I thought that if I could find something in the LM to push into the circuit, it might hold. But since it was electrical, I decided not to put my finger in or use anything that had metal on the end. This is where the legend comes in. People claimed that he used one of the Fisher space pens to help him fix this broken switch, but that isn't entirely true. It wasn't a Fisher pen, but he did use one that had a felt tip. Aldrin said, quote, I had a felt tipped pen in the shoulder pocket of my suit that might do the job. He went on to explain, quote, after moving the countdown procedure up by a couple of hours in case it didn't work, I inserted the pen into the small opening where the circuit breaker switch should have been and pushed it in. Sure enough, the circuit breaker held. We were going to get off the moon after all. To this day, I still have the broken circuit breaker switch and the felt tipped pen I used to ignite our engines. If this didn't work, it is very likely that these astronauts would have been stuck on the moon. This was indeed a very serious problem that could have gone a much different way. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Pluto slug. Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of new information back from our little ex-planet, Pluto. The icy plane shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs, dare I say, are slowly moving across the surface of the planet. Check it out. It reminds me of the episode of SpongeBob, where the gang, you know, rides a rock across the ocean floor. Maybe Patrick and SpongeBob are delivering a pizza on Pluto, okay? They could be just in the weeds, they could be busy. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum. Scientists believe so far the reason for all these lines is that the planet is breathing in a way. If that sounds creepy, it's because it kind of is. The planet's cooling and heating and it's kind of moving around, but we'll leave some room open for space slugs because you know what, at this day and age, you never know. I've seen enough Avenger movies, I'm like, hmm, could be space worms. Number nine, Mima's moon. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Just kidding, this one's actually really close. It's Saturn, it's right, right there. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn in total has 82 moons, including this one, Mimas. A moon that looks oddly familiar. Why do I feel like it's gonna just blast us all the smithereens? Why do I feel like that's gonna happen? Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Which way is it pointing here? That's, that really matters. Saturn's smallest innermost moon is causing quite the stir here on Earth. About a month ago, researchers discovered that this moon has a bit of a wobble to it, almost like a floating magic eight ball. Something is sloshing around inside. Its gravitational pull is a little off. It's kind of... It's just grooving around in the solar system, you know? Mima could potentially be housing a liquid ocean. Yep, we got more water in space. It's pretty close, too. If that was the case, everything we know about water and ocean life in space would have to be rewritten. Number eight, black hole helix. Imagine looking, peering through a telescope, and then you see this. I would throw up right into my telescope. This is a galactic jet. It shot out of a black hole at the center of the M87 galaxy. It's pretty scary looking. This helix shot out a whopping 8,000 light years. Yeah, it's pretty far. That's so far I can't even fathom how far that is. You know, like my brain won't allow me to really picture that. This sounds like a threat, really, but I'll remind you that the M87 galaxy is 55 million light years away from us. So we're not gonna get any galactic jet on our hands anytime soon, know what I mean? But just how does something like this happen? Astronomers in New Mexico discover that this massive jet is caused by a corkscrew-shaped magnetic field. What in the witchcraft, like what? Like a space undertow made out of gravity. That doesn't sound jarring at all. According to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, this is the longest magnetic fields ever found in a galactic jet. Which is fine, that's the first time I've heard of that. I'm like, that's, you can take that rain, enjoy it. That's, we're not gonna try and beat you. It's stuff like this where I ask myself why I'm worrying about a phone bill. Humans are so tiny compared to this, it's insane. We don't matter. Hey, n uh, number eight, we don't matter. Hit that thumbs up. Number seven, Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot. That's just a nightmare in itself. 
So big, always going, no idea why, can't even think about it. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something almost just as interesting, if not more, dare I say. Jupiter's clouds. It feels like you can just put your arm out and touch the silky space sky. It's beautiful, but that's about 20,000 kilometers away. It's also quite scary. This big ball of hydrogen is quite mysterious below these clouds. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up than they ever thought it could go. They've also found constant storms at both the North and South Pole and winds so powerful that the planet's magnetic fields are literally being moved around. That's how strong the wind is. Your skin would just blow off. You'd be a skeleton just standing there. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space on MA10. Number six, Mars trees. This looks like moldy bread almost. What in the hell, what are we looking at here? Is this actually a photo, a real photo from Mars? Are those trees? There's not a chance here. Matt Damon grew potatoes on Mars in the movie The Martian, but I don't think he can grow any pine trees anytime soon. What you're looking at here is still pretty insane. Due to the evaporation of carbon dioxide frost, dark sand is sliding down the frosted side of the dune, so it makes it look like there's trees on the planet Mars. Sun-heated carbon dioxide ice, that's just, I read that and I go, what? What does that even mean? Where do I start with this? We thought we found a giant alien back in 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 flew by and it looked like a face was in the planet. Remember that? It looks like a Jabberwocky. It's just lying getting a suntan. This one here is in an optical illusion. It's just weird space science. Number five, smooth moon. When we think of moons in the sky or like how other planets have other moons, we think of them as our own. Just a big ball of cheese in the sky, a big sphere, it's got craters, it's pale, we get it, right? Well, as we've seen so far in this list, some moons can look like the Death Star and some moons can look like chewed gum, apparently. Saturn's small moon Atlas looks like a UFO. It's not a sphere at all, it literally has the shape of a UFO. How scary is that? NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017 and it almost looks like two moons have crashed into one another and then now it has a ring-like edge to it. When new photos came back after discovering this moon way back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. In 4K, they're like, oh, it's not even the pixels, it's actually really smooth. A smooth moon, you say? <laughs> Let me take a look here. This little smooth moon in the sky, a little pervert. Number four, dead galaxies. This one sounds scary, dead galaxies. Guardians of the dead galaxy. New research from NASA, including the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in Northern Chile, they found six different dead galaxies in total. They're all like, that's one, that's two, and they're like, hey, we found four, all dead, horrifying. How does this happen? Let's look into it. These dead galaxies had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on on nothing at that point. It's kind of like when your car battery dies, only this is on a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to new questions we didn't even know we had. Like what led to these galaxies to die anyways? What happened to all the cold gas in them so early on? These six galaxies lived fast and hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, she proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight onto the future of the studies, which she said, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy's center turn on and heat up all the gas? If so, the gas could still be out there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos to come back and just, you know, start this fire up. Just a big, someone get a big lighter and just go and just light it back up. Alas, new life. Is that Thor? Welcome back. Number three, solar flares. Our lives literally revolve around the sun. It blesses us with life energy, solar rotation, and most importantly, tan lines, obviously. But sometimes she acts up. Sometimes she gets a little cray cray. Sometimes she gets a little and then she spurts out lava and scares us all. Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our entire planet. Yep, like I said, she's moody. This creates a stream of radiation. It's called solar wind. Now, normally this is a beautiful event to see. We have many photos of it now. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this specific radiation. Beautiful, but really scary when you think about it. This past October, a large solar flare was spotted and then three days later, it finally hit Earth. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is pretty strong, especially when you look at it as a, you know, on a planetary scale. The biggest solar event was back in 1859. It's called the Carrington event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking, literally shocking, some telegraph operators. Like if that happens again, and it's even stronger this time, we're looking at huge power outages on a massive scale. Imagine talking to someone on your iPhone and it blows up. Right in the middle of Avatar 2, boom, blackout. Life as we know it is now meaningless. We're all crying in public. Number two, the space crab. Is the multiverse collapsing? 
What, what is this? The appropriately named Space Crab Nebula was discovered back in 1054. Yeah, way back then, astronomers looked into the sky and saw this new bright star. They saw it during daytime. That's how they knew something was up. What they were observing at the time was a supernova explosion. How spectacular is that? This was when the Crab Nebula was born. It's not too far away either. It's just a mere, you know, 6,500 light years tucked away in the constellation Taurus. If you're a Taurus, you're watching, you're like, oh, no way, I'm a Libra. I'm like, get out of here. What do you know? The image of the space crab here was captured over the course of three months. NASA put together 24 exposures captured by, of course, our Hubble. The orange glow we see, those are literally star remains, just large pockets of hydrogen. The interesting part here with the space crab is back in 2005, over the course of 10 Hubble exposures from September to November, these waves can be seen expanding outwards, waves coming from the nebula's pulsar. Space is so scary. We have one moon to worry about here. Meanwhile, all of this is going on in our space neighborhood. I'm terrified. And finally, number one, mystery wave. More waves coming in hot, really hot this time around. If you've seen Interstellar, this next one should hit close to home. I'm not a fan of wave pools or waves in general. My stupid head just bobbing around in the ocean, that's, that's peril, that's, that's a nightmare situation. I can't swim too well. I don't know, I'm too lanky. I'm like a piece of seaweed floating around. The largest wave ever seen in the entire solar system, of course, I had to save this one for last. On a planet a little closer to the sun, Venus, the pressure in the atmosphere can cause some massive waves. Back in 2015, a Japanese spacecraft zoomed by and caught this phenomena. Usually clouds there will move around 100 meters a second, but these clouds, these massive ripples, stayed in the same place for four days, way above the ground level also. They were just like, huh? and then they got stuck there. Due to a runaway greenhouse effect, temperatures on Venus hit around 460 degrees Celsius. So this wave may have been powerful enough to change the climate for those four days. It's pretty crazy. I feel like Canada, we get a lot of weather changes, but this, this is next level. Mm -hmm.